everyone. Welcome back to the Awesome Life Podcast. I'm Karen Stultz, your host for women in transition who are looking for resources, inspiration, and my guests and I supply that to the very best of our ability. But number one, we have fun. And my guest today, Heather Russell, is so much fun. I am, I'm having the best time with her and I'm I can't tell you how excited I am to have her as my guest on the Awesome Life podcast and what she can share with us. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Uh, Heather is a wellness coach, a life coach, an energy healer, and she is shaking up the industry with her unique approach to empowering women leaders, creators, and visionaries. She's worked in the corporate world for over 20 years and is now working as a wellness coach. She was, well, she was also in the corporate world. She also was working on the side as a wellness coach. And she really knows, she knows what it's like to hustle and and be moved in that, that culture that is a total pathway to burnout, exhaustion, and dis-ease. She's a lover of all things natural and woo-woo. I love that, Heather. Um, She has developed a four-phase process that helps her clients heal past roots, define new future, empower confidence and authenticity, and really supercharge their motivation for consistent inspired action. She also incorporates shamanic practices and EFT in her client sessions that provides a holistic and well-rounded approach to her coaching. It's not just about getting and setting goals. It's about creating lasting changes and transformation and empowering her clients to take control and design their own lives. I, I just love all of this. Heather, and thank you so, so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Karen, for having me on the show. Oh, it's great. And and full disclosure, guys, I have been honored to be one of her guest speakers on a major, wonderful summit. People are in transformation, no matter where they're starting from. But especially when they hit 40, if it, it was like me, uh, 40 was a bad year for me, I got to say. 35, fine. 30, great. <laughs> 40, it was bad. Uh, and so Heather is hosting a, the Vibrant Women Summit for Women After 40. And I, I, I'm so honored to be her guest. But we'll get into that later. First of all, Heather, how did you go about dealing with wellness and the 20 years in corporate and what tell us your story girl (laughs) yeah I have um I've always been interested in health and wellness I was the kid who was out in the garden um dissecting bugs and then trying to heal yes with rose thorns and then trying to heal them with rose petals um but my family was really conservative so I knew that being a doctor really wasn't um, in the pathway for me. So I, you know, started performing like, you know, I wanted to be a dancer. My first year of college, I uh, want really wanted to be an opera singer. I had a singing career. And then I said, well, I'm going to face rejection more than I'm going to face acceptance. So that, so I went a bit into business and, um, you know, just growing up, my dad was a bodybuilder and um, around him, he was always surrounded with other bodybuilders. And, you know, this was like in the nineties. So this is when we had the snack wells and the fat free craze and watching these guys eat plain tuna fish and white rice. I know I, I can't really remember what the, the ingredients were when I was like young, you know, I just saw them like very slowly, their body started breaking down. So I thought, Hey, this is really interesting. Kind of like the bugs that wouldn't revive themselves with the rose petals I was putting on them. Um, So I started like really paying attention to the things that I was putting in my body, although I was looking at like needing to have zero fat and just be really high protein. And as I got a little bit older and I was in the corporate arena, um, I just thought, 
Hmm. You know, there's some things just really that aren't working with my body. And like you named the diet, I had tried it. So I have done, you know, I've been vegetarian. I was vegetarian for 20 years. I've been a pescatarian, you know, for several years. I was a raw vegan, which was very challenging to do. It, it, uh, creates certain conditions. You like start to get your body starts to get cold. Like you have just too much dampness in you. Mm. Um, but you know, I was like trying all this stuff out because I was experimenting on myself and reading tons of books while, you know, it was like my escape from corporate America. But I was such a driven, um, you know, person. I was a project and, and a program manager, and I always found myself. I was always the one who was leading the teams. I was the, you know, I'm the eldest of five, so I think it just kind of came leader. naturally. <laughs> You're a leader, right? Um, and I really liked, you know, telling my siblings what to do. So I felt that that would be a really good transition, <laughs> right, in corporate America. But you know, I was really driving myself really hard. I really wanted to make something of myself. I wanted to get that, you know, I was at an investment bank at one point and I just really loved it there. Had so many friends, loved that. And it was the hustle and grind culture. And, you know, and I managed, you know, a really large regulatory project and um, many, many project managers and like an into over an entire department. And I was like, all I could think about was, getting that promotion, making director, then making executive director, mm. that I was running my body off of at least two venti, extra peppermint, extra chocolate, soy of all things, soy mochas a day. So I would have that as I was going into work and maybe I'd go pop out at, you know, at lunch. And I really wasn't taking lunch. And if I did go get lunch, it was the most unhealthy things. It was pizza. And I would be like, no, but I'm having a salad. So it's not that unhealthy. But then I would say like, Hey, why not have a sour apple martini? A dirty martini sounds really good because this was like such a drinking culture. And even though I knew better, I knew better. And I was doing this to my, you know, and I was doing this to my body. And then I was like, okay, so I'm going to cut out pizza. You know, I didn't really dawn on me, like how much sugar, you know, and what toxins are in all of the other ingredients. And so it really wasn't dawning on me. And then I was like, I mean, how did I gain all this weight? You know, I'm super stressed out. Come on. You know, my adrenals just must be completely exhausted. And, um, and I mean, it was really crazy. I used to organize something we called debauchery nights. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like private invite only, you know, it's like I said, with like a little performer and, um, you know, and then we, it was just such a hard drinking culture and because I was never home and, you know, I had a really tense relationship. My, you know, my relationship was on the rocks, the way I felt about myself on the inside and the outside was totally on the rocks. And you could just, you could just see it, you know? Um, and there was a couple, there was a friend that I had, who was a really good friend of mine there. And he, um, he died. Hmm. He had an injury doing, he, uh, par, I can't remember the name of it. It's not parasailing, it's, I think it's paragliding. And, um, and it really made me reconsider what it was that I was doing. Yes, I was really good at my job, but I hated it. And it wasn't bringing me joy, even that promotion that was elusive to me. It wasn't, I knew that wasn't going to bring me joy. So I said, what is it that I enjoy? I enjoy like all things wellness, herbs, crystals, my little woo woo thing, learning about, you know, different forms of nutrition. At that point, I, you know, started to really clean up the way that I was living my life. And I went back to school. I did a year long herbal apprenticeship. I got a master's in nutrition. Um, and I, my life really started to shift. And so I moved out of corporate to do my practice full time. I had gotten divorced and then I just kind of got distracted. You know, I got distracted. I, I hadn't fully healed that inner part of me that was like, no girl, you have this, you can do this. And while I was fully booked, I just, I let the, all of that limiting self-belief stop me and I had full practice. And then I wasn't, you know, replenishing it. I wasn't going out there and talking to people about, you know, me being the facilitator of them changing their lives. Mm -hmm. And then I had no clients, you know, right where my, my playing small self wanted me to be. And I went back to corporate and have, re <laughs> and then relived that cycle. And it really manifested as, I, I didn't even, I had worked at another place 
you know, after I went back and I worked there for almost 10 years. And I, while I was doing my wellness coaching again, about five years into it, I didn't even have the courage or the self-esteem to ask for a raise. And I hadn't gotten a raise or a cost of living adjustment for, you know, for that nine years, almost 10 years. I was mm. complaining about it constantly. How come they couldn't see me based upon my merit? And it was really because this is not the work that I was supposed to be doing. And it was a very painful lesson to have learned too about really having your own personal integrity and listening to your intuition and doing something that is the right path for you. So instead I stayed, you know, I just totally played small. I, I didn't trust myself. I had all these, you know, I didn't, hadn't integrated my shadow self, you know, yet like all sides of my personality, I was still wearing so many masks and it was exhausting. And I finally got the courage, you know, the universe said, you want to know a girly, it is time and you're done. And I said, yes, I'm done. And so ever since that point, you know, I've been uh, doing full-time coaching for the last several years and I couldn't be happier. Oh, that's that the longest story. <laughs> wow. That is fantastic. And having somebody who actually has gone through all of those diets, uh, I have looked at them and said, mm, very interesting. Mm hmm not for me necessarily. <laughs> I, I could do it for a day and a half. Uh, yes. But, but like you, it was very interesting how nutrition came in because I, I had a huge coaching toolbox of odds and ends at, as I'm sure you learned in the coaching field, lots of things. Mm -hmm. And, but I didn't think about nutrition at all guess what? Yeah. Nutrition is probably right at the top if things are not going well. Right. Yeah. You have to, yeah, you start to, you know, like you had uh, mentioned, right. you start to manifest disease and food really is your medicine. Like it is, there's not one, there's not one food, like not one food on this planet that all of us can eat. Exactly. Right. So it's a very individualized thing. And, you know, you really are trying to get as whole and as close to like the natural source as possible, but really it is your emotions that causes dis-ease in your, in your body. And mm -hmm. well, food and the herbs can come in and heal. If you have not, you know, had your, like essentially your come to Jesus moment with yourself and realized like, really, I am the cause of my own suffering. And I am manifesting all of these things, which I had a very hard, like, and I've done this several times where I've had that, you know, kick in the butt by the universe, you know, saying like, you're not, you're not living the life you're supposed to be doing. You're not integrity with yourself. And I've had to really, you know, it's, and it's a continuous process. You know, I, when you think you've got it down, you don't have it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, it. There's another layer to go to, isn't there? <laughs> oh, Remini. But being able to take responsibility for yes. yourself. And it's hard sometimes, especially in our society today, because it's such a blaming society. It must be somebody else's fault in corporate too. Not my fault. I did everything right. It must be your fault. Yeah. Uh, but we have exactly. to take responsibility, don't we? We have to take responsibility. And it also is disempowering ourselves when we're putting like something on somebody else. So if you were, you know, and I, and I still run into this myself, so I'm not saying, you know, that this doesn't happen, but the moment that I am in judgment of somebody else, really, they are a mirror for me and what I'm not accepting about myself, because really I should be so confident and in love with myself that whatever somebody else says about me, right. Is their opinion about me or how, we're, how they behave shouldn't have any effect on me, you know, because I am my own sovereign being. And, you know, like that, that shouldn't affect you. You have to be so solid in who you are as a person and love yourself. Like that is something we are so struggling with. This is another reason why we have so many problems in the world is we we just can't stand in the presence of love. Mm. We just have so much fear porn coming at us constantly that, you know, it's, it's, you know, and studies have proven that the more fear, like the more anxiety and fear that you are exposed to, you, you get dumber, right? It like starts to shut off areas of your brain. Mm. And then it's like, yes, 
that's, you know, that's so true because when you're in fight or flight, all you're thinking about is survival. You know, you're not thinking about, Hey, I'm going to go have that incredible glass of wine <laughs> and go away with my friends I'll and I'm going to enjoy that. every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. it. It's a choice. And if you take responsibility for your choices, then you can actually, um, honor yourself, love yourself, recognize. Yeah. Hey, that glass of wine in the evening, that's my choice. <laughs> and I am not going to beat myself up about it. Exactly. Yeah. It might be adding on calories. But you know what? It's doing a whole lot more for my enjoyment with the people I'm in. I don't have to have it every night. But in this situation, it it's just fun. And fun yeah. is number one. Yes, it is. It is. So if you what you are doing is is fun, great. Right? But yes. if you look ahead a day or two or a week and say, when I look back on this fun, am I going to appreciate the fact that I made that choice? Um, not necessarily, but don't beat yourself up. If you've looked at that and said, you know what? I'm good. Exactly. This is something I want. <laughs> I want that, that veggie burger, or I want that T-bone steak. It, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And I wanted to have that chocolate cheesecake afterwards. You know, it's, it's about really giving yourself some grace. You know, sometimes when we're reaching for food, you know, it either is reminding us of a memory or it's the way that we are, you know, like, um, t you know, tending to ourselves. Mm. Right. So it's, you know, it's like, but we're, we're reaching for food because like, we're missing something. Exactly. We're, we're missing that memory or we're missing that piece of us. Or, you know, maybe your grandmother used to make something for you and, and you just miss that. And you're in the need and, and you're in need of like this really big internal hug, but you don't know how to do that for yourself. You know, that's why we turn to food. So it's like when you, you know, so as you mentioned, like if you are going to go out there and have that, enjoy it, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't, you know, the, uh, the opposite of enjoying it is beating yourself up. I knew I shouldn't have had that extra glass. I, I know I'm not supposed to have two glasses of wine. It's got all that sugar, you know, or whatever you're saying to yourself, guess what? Your body hears that. And your body's like, yeah, you're right. You want to know what? And guess what? I'm going to start functioning like that. And then it just like little by little just starts to break your body down, yeah. you know, your emotional and your physical body. Yeah. Now you said that you had a, a four phase process to help people is it all around the food that we're eating or it really has yeah and actually it has nothing to do with food we're eating oh cool <laughs> all right uh. no the 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 phases are really um they're very they are very focused on the lower four chakras i do a lot of chakra work energy work and it's really an, an internal job, right? Because you could be eating all the most amazing foods. You could have the most amazing job, but if your relationship stinks and you hate yourself, you know, and you don't have like this outlet where you are, you know, content with yourself and like meditation or prayer, you are, you're not going to be healthy. So health really is this inside job. And the, so I work a lot with the lower four chakras because if you're not balanced there, then, you know, you can be like, all over the place, you know, and a little bit discombobulated, maybe not speaking your truth, but you'll be, because you're blocking yourself really from like your root, you know, you have to do all of that like work. It's really about integrating um, and accepting and integrating your shadow and people freak out. You know, when you, the moment you say shadow work, it's like, oh, I don't want those dark aspects, but you know, we can't be wearing all of these masks constantly. So when we say like, Hey, I'm not an aggressive person. And then somebody, you know, says something to you and it triggers you and you're like, ah, you know, you're going after them. You know, you haven't actually looked in that mirror and it's, it's, that is your shadow self. It's like, Hey, I'm over here and I need to be acknowledged. And I need to be accepted because we are multifaceted, infinite beings. Right. And, you know, and we're just blocking out all these parts. And when I was in corporate, I, played a completely different role than who I am innately myself. When I, you know, grew up, I played a different role. You know, I'm, you know, Ginger and Steve's daughter. And, you know, and then when I was married, I had this, or when I was somebody's girlfriend, you know, I had this little alter ego and I go, you know what, these things really aren't even me. It's like, 
being on a stage and, you know, being this performer and not integrating all those pieces. So I think it's really important to start working with those four um, lower chakras. And if I can get into it and tell you my four step process. I'd love it. Love it. Love it. Yes. Okay. So the first phase is um, we're doing, we do a healing shift. So we go back and we are uncovering like, and healing any past um, issues that you have in your, you know, that's hereditary things that you have picked up in childhood, things that you have picked up in the 40 plus years that you have been on this planet. Um, the root chakra is about security and safety and money and about belonging. And when you don't, when you are not in sync with all those things, if that is not balanced, you will have a tendency to go out and have very harmful, you know, behaviors to yourself. You're not going to fit in. Therefore you might attract, you know, like, you know, relationships that are toxic or circumstances where you continue to suffer. You don't belong. Your, your fear is getting kicked out of your tribe. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's one of our greatest fears. That's our, that's our survival mode. We have to have community. We need each other and not fitting in and being left out really is like a major shock to our, to our root chakra. So we uncover all of that. Um, and this affects money. And like I was saying, money in relationships, your security about yourself, what you will accept from others. And then phase two, we move up to your, um, your sacral chakra. And this is the belief and the possibility shift. So this is where you get to dream about a mad, you know, like a radical new shift in your life. You get to dream a new future for yourself, right? You get to start thinking about what it is that you want to start calling in. So that area, right, is they, they're always saying like, oh, it's, you know, your sexual chakra, but, you know, you're also ruled, you know, that it, you know, it is also regulated by, you know, fear, I think your kidneys. Um, so if you start having physical manifestations, it could be because of a blocked um, sacral chakra, mm -hmm. but it's creativity. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we say, oh, you know, again, it's all oh, that that's the sexual chakra. No, it's not. It well, it is, but this is but our a whole creation lot more. center. <laughs> yes. It's our creation center. This yeah. is where like we as women, you know, specifically because I coach only women, but this is where our power source. And we, when we are not connected to that power source, it's not okay. Like you just, again, it's about attracting the wrong things into your life. You play small. Mm -hmm. You allow yourself to accept less than you deserve. You have that crazy negative self-talk. And then, you know, that your womb is so powerful. You just lose, you just disconnect from it. And then you don't know who you are. You, you know, you're in this like limbo kind of area. So we really work to integrate that back in and get you to realize this is your creativity center. This is your power center. Mm -hmm. And I won't say the word here, the P power, <laughs> that we do call it, but you know, it's about really getting comfortable with yourself. Like you are in a creatrix, you've got this sort of shift. And then the third is the empowerment shift. So you heal forward into confidence and empowerment, right? So now you're, we're in our uh, solar plexus chakra, right? Our self-esteem, right? Becomes more vibrant because we've healed, we've healed the bottom two. We're ready to step into our power. We're ready to take action. We get to like really imbue all that confidence that we did from our big dream that we had our big, bright future with that we have in phase two. And then phase four, right, is our heart chakra. And this is where we just are integrating everything. And that's called the action and uplifting um, shift. And that is really where you get to take this inspired action. You, this dream of yours, this future of yours that you have designed. And it's, we want to have a design. We don't want to have our life by default. And too many of us are living lives by default. I did for years and years and years. And I was so yeah. unhappy, but here, you know, it's like that super motivation and you get to birth. All of this gets to be birthed. And it's kind of like the you know, you're like past the chrysalis, you know, form and you're like this beautiful, magical butterfly mm -hmm. after that. But, you know, we do work on the other chakras as well, but these are the form, you know, primary that we work on, you know, that takes a, you know, the, it takes a place over um, a year, it takes place over a year because you will have, you have setbacks, right? Yeah. We don't, yeah. we're not perfect and you need to have that support. And we know that yes, 
So you're totally fine though, you know, from your first year, fourth chakra today, but something might happen. Maybe you lose your job. Maybe it's the universe telling you that that was, you know, this is your wake up call, but you know, we always need to have that continued support. And that is what that, um, that year long program is, you know, it really helps to drive that shift home. You know, it's, you know, you're pregnant. I don't have kids. So, but, but you're pregnant for nine months. Right. And then when the baby, you know, arrives at, you know, nine months, you're not like, Hey, you should be walking and taking care of yourself. So it just really has this all encompassing, you know, this love and, you know, and, and this, this supportive process. So I've just had, you know, just so much fun creating it and teaching it and just really watching that transformation as I have that transformation for myself. And that is where it all begins, right? Oftentimes it's because we went through that transformation. We know what it's about. We can relate to what our clients are experiencing. Mm -hmm. So, and we can show them it does not have to last forever. Yeah. And that, exactly. is, that is the key. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and to recognize the abundance all around us, the awesomeness that is you which is what this is all about because exactly. you really are awesome. And I <laughs> love the fact, I, I, oh, Heather is awesome. I just, I fell in love with her the moment I met her. Oh, thank you, Karen. It was so totally mutual. <laughs> Karen and I talked for a half hour before our interview for the summit and also this podcast. And we'll talk for about a half hour afterwards again. <laughs> we'll look forward to it. Absolutely. And it, you know, it really is important to, to have all of that information. I, I remember that I, I was teaching some EFT classes. And it was, it was comical. And I know that you do EFT in your work as well. So uh, know the commonality, but the, mm -hmm. it, it was comical because I was giving the EFT class and, and how EFT is great because there are setbacks and you do want to say something bad, but you're not allowed to with any other modality. You're not <laughs> allowed to, you're supposed to think calm, peace, tranquil, right. relax which are all fine, breathe, excellent. But when you are in that triggered trauma, that's mm -hmm. very difficult to do. So we were giving this, this class, I was giving this class and one of the clients there said, you know, I really don't have any issue at all, but um, yeah, this is a practice session. So I'll come up with something great. She sounded just like me. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> so we went through and very, very conscious, very, uh, you know, upper three con uh, chakra mm -hmm. areas. So we went into it and I said something negative, like that blickety blank, they much like you, it was, they haven't given me a raise. They're taking me for granted. They are blickety blank people taking me for granted and I am angry as hell. Oh, I don't want to say that because they're good people. Mm -hmm. They're good people. And it was, it was interesting. And I'm sure you've seen it with your clients too, or tell me if you've seen it with your clients too, when, when she finally agreed to just say it, it was like, Oh, that felt good. <laughs> right? Yeah, I've seen that as well. You know, like you said, it's, you know, we are constantly told like, no, concentrate on the positive. Don't bring this in your reality. For the longest time, I thought, you know, my law of attraction picker was totally off because I was attracting all of these things that I did not want. But yeah. that is because I wasn't voicing out and then pivoting. And you're right, like EFT, you get to release that. And then all of a sudden your nervous system aligns and then you get to call in exactly what it is that you want. But if you're like, have all of that inside of you and you're just like, they fucking didn't get, you know, and then you're like, oh yeah, I'm so positive. You know, you know, I've got good things coming my way. No, it's a contradiction in your system. So then your system does nothing. It stays at your default point. Yeah, right. you're, you're, Which you're, is... you're conscious and your subconscious are working together to keep you right where you are. That's right. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and, 
And that is the challenge. And I think most of our listeners are are in transition. They're looking for that shift, that change, that something. And for me, it happened much later in life. Uh, so I really love people like you who recognize it earlier so that we can change the world with, with wonderful techniques that right. are not hard, guys. These are not hard. What Heather is talking about is not hard, but just take the time, honor yourself. Because if you don't honor yourself, right. how can you honor others? It just doesn't work. And so what Heather is offering here is just so amazing and that transformation is so fantastic to be able to help women really see themselves i i, I was accused of that for years of, i don't want it hard i don't want it hard nope not gonna be hard and they said but karen your root chakra is totally wonky you got to get into your root chakra and i said what the heck is a chakra <laughs> but um yeah it it was one of those things where oh all right that's something i can research that's something mm -hmm. i can learn as is that real and with the help of people like like heather you can recognize and see how important it is to release that and then reinstill give yourself the, the joy of, of growth, of being the leader that you truly are, because that is, be vibrant, be a vibrant <laughs> woman. That's all there is to it. Life is too short, but no matter where you are on the life path, it's never too late to make the shift. I, I'm living proof of that. It's never too late to make the shift and create a new life, like being a life coach. The impact that we can make in the world is wonderful. It's so uh, I love it. So how can people get in touch with you, Heather? Okay. Um, they can get in touch with me through my website. Um, I have a freebie offer. It's a three, um, it's a little, it's a small video series uh, that really is just like about empowerment and embodying your authentic self. You know, it's three to five minutes. It's just something that really you can supercharge yourself. And it's just a reminder about stepping into your own power, coming from that womb energy, and really that you get to dictate whether or not your energy is off or on that day. And then, you know, if you need to reground yourself, which, you know, then you regret there's regrounding exercises in it. And just so, you know, what Karen was saying, you know, our natural state, like we come to this planet, we are spiritual beings on this planet, like to have a human experience. And our natural state is about abundance and joy. We are not here to suffer. You had just, you know, and if you are suffering, you know, seek help. There's, you know, like Karen, myself, there's so many of us out there that want to like ease that pathway. We have gone through the school of hard knocks and it has been super challenging, but, you know, but you, but there is a way and don't wait until you're in such a state of distress or you have disease that is manifesting just start now, start with little things like, you know, what can you do to make yourself happy today? You know, can you say no to something, you know, and one of the most pleasurable things is saying no to something you really don't want to do as opposed oh, to like having somebody bamboozle you into doing ooh, it. <laughs> ooh, I'm standing in my power. That is a strange feeling. You know, <laughs> I said no, because, you know, and, and it's very cliche, but you hear that all the time. Like no is a complete answer, but it is no, I'm not going to do it. Or, or if you are not at that point at this moment in time. And you're just too nice to say no. <laughs> you can say, let me think about it. Or not at this moment in time. It's okay. 
that you don't you're not slamming the door on their face <laughs> they're just saying not at this moment thank you for the offer exactly yeah so reaching that that gentleness way you know rather than jumping in whole hog i know oh I, I would I would take on other people's responsibility and people mm -hmm. would say, gee whiz, Karen, will you stop taking the blame for everybody? And I said, I don't see it as taking the blame. I see it as a way of honoring them and honoring myself. So rather than saying no, I didn't say yes, mm -hmm. but I might say, well, that's interesting, or let me think about that, or that's nice. uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry goes a long way. Or thank you for your patience. Or thank you for your patience. Um, thank you for being patient with me. Yeah. And because as you were saying earlier, we are mirrors of each other. Mm -hmm. So if something is triggered, it's obviously something in you that has not been addressed. So what people didn't hear when I said, I'm sorry, because I never voiced that part because I didn't want to escalate things necessarily was in me, I'm sorry you feel that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take it on. I'm not going to take responsibility for your actions, but I'm sorry you feel that way because it obviously is a mirror. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to take it. So there are ways of doing that in the bottom, bottom line. And <laughs> guys, uh, be sure to come to the Vibrant Women's Summit and I don't know, is that going to be available so that you could watch it after the fact? So it's a the vi Vibrant Woman. Uh, so Karen has her link for that. Um, it's a free seven-day series. And we're starting January 30th. And, there, and the official series goes until February 4th. Sorry, February 5th, that Sunday. And then we're going to do a replay um, Monday and Tuesday. So Monday, yeah. Tuesday replay. Um, and then after that, the series, um, it's no longer available. Okay. So guys, I will make sure that this, this podcast gets out there and the information for Heather Russell coaching and the, um, uh, vibrant women's summit, which guys come listen, um, <laughs> come listen to Karen on the summit. you know, the, the summit is, you know, there are three interviews each day and they're, well, Karen and I went a little over, no surprise, but you know, they're about 30 <laughs> over minutes. Too. <laughs> so they're like really small, you know, digestible pieces that, you know, you can listen to and glean some information and some knowledge. Each of the speakers has a free gift that they're generously donating for you so that you can be in action immediately. And, you know, I just want to remind people that we learn by repetition. So while there's a, you know, you go, oh, I've already heard this thing about hormones. Oh, I've already heard this thing about, you know, like nutrition. I've already heard this about like being myself, you know, we, you know, it might be, it might take maybe that fifth time. Maybe it might take a different speaker who is saying it to you before you go. Yeah, I got, you know, now I get it. I mean, that is really, yeah, I wish I had listened to myself and all the times, like all that information that I had gotten. So I hadn't suffered for 25 plus years in, in corporate, but, you know, I just really want to invite your audience to come have a listen, just really listen and absorb that information, you know, because this information has the power to change your life. You just have to allow it. I love it. The A in awesome. Be aware and allow. That is right. So guys, until next time, have an awesome life. Take care. Thank you, Karen.